we've invited 12 very different people from all around the country to watch a big match together in high definition. I'll be watching everyone really closely. I'll be observing their body language, what they say, and how they react. Now, why are you moving back in? Why are you saying so quiet? You would have moved over, and then it would have took the angle, and he would have had to come on. There's always one person who does most of the talking. He or she is the motor Wait master. Wait a minute. Don't pick it up. <laughs> is that not wise? No. No, you can't pick it up. Yes, back, back pass. Yeah. Look at Suzanne. Oh, she's a bluffer because she spends a lot of time checking out other people's responses. She's looking for clues as to how she should behave. <laughs> the first goal has just gone in, and we've witnessed an enormous range of reactions. But there's one person, Greg, who's pretty indifferent. Did you not get caught up in the atmosphere? I did. I was gobsmacked. I couldn't say anything. <laughs> for Claire and Rachel, watching football, it's about the opportunity to consume. I shall have all this gone by the end of it. <laughs> For some people, the game itself is not enough. They need to be trafficking information. They are the social sharers. Sing when you join. For the super fan, football is in the blood. It's been passed down through generations. It's part of their heritage. They are carrying the torch. Whenever there's a difference of opinion or an argument breaks out between fans, you need a living room referee. Somebody who can step into the breach, resolve the dispute, and calm the fans down. It's only a game. Supporters often behave in very different ways. Carl and Mark, for example, are extremely animated, whereas Carol, you wouldn't even know. So we've seen that people differ enormously when they're watching football on TV and that they fall into quite distinct types. The question is, which type are you? Tell us in the comments. <laughs>